Your stupid mistake did this. I lost it. Somebody help me! Finding the right spoke. <laughs> On August 18th, 1993, Pam Eldred headed out around 9.30 in the morning from her home in Ontario, California to drive her 13-year-old daughter Heather and her younger daughter Amber to drill team rehearsal at their school just two blocks away. Pam was always careful when it came to her children's safety. But on that day, she made a decision that left her only with regret. Oh, why are we the Heather wanted to ride in the back of the truck. And it was just one of those mornings where a teenager tends to sometimes get away with a lot by getting in your face saying, come on, Mom, please, you're so paranoid, you're so overprotective. I've driven for years and years and never been in an accident. I wasn't going far. I wasn't going on any main streets. And I thought we'd be safe. Hey, what about your white tennis shoes? I have them. Twelve-year-old Amber was riding up front with her mother. Heather's sitting in the back there. Can you uh, knock on the window and tell her to move? I'm afraid she's going to fall out. Heather! I said to move not so close to the tailgate in case the tailgate fell open or something. Okay, I'm going to have to pull over. My mom told her to just move to the middle or the side. I want to basically be like Heather because she always made my days happier. But she's always been real stubborn. Okay, do you have the candy bag? Yeah, the back with Heather. What about your partners? Who are you going to be in the room with? Um, okay. I have Lacey and Andrea. So you got older girls. Have yeah. they been there before? Okay. After drill team, I'll take you. I think Heather needs them too. Okay. Are you on? Oh, the I looked in the rearview mirror and, and Heather wasn't where's there. Heather? Heather? God, where's Heather? Amber, where's Heather? Oh, God, she's right there. Heather! Oh, God! I have never known fear, Heather. true fear, until that day. Heather! Heather. Somebody help me! She Somebody appeared help me. normal, baby. but unconscious, if, if oh, that I makes any sense. Baby, there was blood coming out of her nose. But really, at that time, that was all I saw. I didn't, I didn't see you. I didn't, Heather. She's so All she could do was hold me because she was glad that I was okay. She would tell me it's all my fault. I shouldn't have done this. And you know, I didn't want to hear my mom saying that because I was afraid my mom would really go insane. See you, Heather. My kids are almost my life. I love them more than anything. I thought, God, you know, if you're going to take somebody, take me. Don't take her. She's too young. Engine 136, medic engine 133. Oh, two ambulance. Traffic collision, Haven and Creekside. Pam's close friend, Tammy Marion, happened to be driving by the scene of the accident. Pam! Pam started screaming to me, that's Heather, it's Heather in the street. And she was crying and sobbing. So when I ran up, I said, give them some room so that she could calm down and let them work with Heather and not scare Heather. She's all right, she's all right. Come on, let's sit you down. I was trying real hard to pull myself together in, in case she could hear me. And I lost it. All right, do not move me. To see your child so helpless and to know also that your stupid mistake did this. It shouldn't happen. It just shouldn't happen. Stay here. No, you have to stay here for your safety. One of the first paramedics on the scene was Mike Kearns from the Ontario Fire Department. She had a large uh, bump on her forehead and that was the only injury that they had found. My biggest concern was that she had some type of a brain injury. Okay, thanks. Beyond that, I just don't know. He said, to the best of my knowledge, she has no broken bones, but she's got a bad concussion, and we're going to have to take her to the hospital. She's not responding at all? No. We noticed that her breathing pattern was becoming a little irregular. When we went to clear her airway, uh, she had a clenched jaw. And with somebody that has a suspected or possible neck injury, you don't want to be trying to pry her jaw apart. 
Mercy Caroline paramedic Greg Wardine arrived soon after. What happens with a head injury is the brain swells inside the skull, basically, and all vital functions stop. Respirations, heart rate, everything is just stopped. If we weren't able to innovate this girl and get oxygen to her brain, we weren't going to be able to hand anything viable over to the hospital. No, you can't go. Come You'll be able to go later on. They didn't want me to ride with them, and I understood that. They don't need a hysterical mom in the back. We are currently en route to three to Loma Linda. Uh, we're getting ready to attempt a nasal innovation on this patient, if that's okay. I was talking to the hospital, trying to talk them into letting me do a nasal intubation to help her breathe. The IV's in. That can be very dangerous with a head injury because if you've got a skull fracture, you can go right into the brain. 133, this is Ontario. Hold off on the nasal intubation. Tell them we really need a community medication. I got back on the radio with them and told them she wasn't responding to anything we were doing. I'm going to get the Lido set up. Can yeah, you give it to us? Go ahead. She was starting to posture which means that her brain is getting very, very little oxygen. It was about a 20-minute transport time, and we knew that she couldn't wait that long for them to do the procedure there. She's starting to vomit. Let's get her on her side. The posturing was coming more frequently, and we were afraid of the possibility of her vomiting again. So we called back again and said, we really need to do this. If this girl has a chance, we need to do this. We're turned right now. we got our hands full. Um, I'm seeing the patient's teeth are clenched. We'll go ahead and check that again, see if we can get an oil in her. Uh, if not, we would really like to try to nasally innovate this patient. I know what they're thinking, but it's our only choice. It had gotten to the point where I was going to go ahead and do it and suffer the consequences when I got to the hospital because it was either done right now or it's not done and she is basically an organ donor after that. 133 Ontario, um, Dr. Rudolph is saying go ahead and nasally intubate her if you're unable to get an oral. Obviously once you get the order, doing it is a whole different story. Fortunately, the tube went right in. 1.5 Lido on board. Okay. You just hope and pray that everything that you did was enough to give the doctors at the hospital a chance. At Loma Linda University Medical Center, 13-year-old Heather Eldred was examined by neurosurgeon David Neerum. I felt that the odds were 100 to 1 against her. She had a massive hemorrhage. Her airway was protected, but they had no cranial nerve uh, signs of any activity. So things looked very ominous. In my heart I'm saying oh well we're gonna get there and she's gonna be mad at us because we weren't there right away but to see the face on the woman when we gave them our name I knew I knew it was really bad Hi. are you Heather's mom and dad yes I'm Connie I'm the pediatric trauma coordinator she took me by the arm and she said we need to take you to another room and I just looked at her and said no you're not taking me in another room I know what that means Heather's father Richard had followed the ambulance to the hospital they uh, told us that they didn't think Heather was going to make it she was in a uh, very critical condition her brain was bleeding there was a lot of swelling we have a couple of options one is we could go in and do surgery we met with the surgeon. He came out and just basically told us the same thing, that he could do surgery. But there was another option, and I asked him what the option was, and he said, well, we can just wait. I asked him, well, what will happen if we just wait? And he said, well, she'll die. I realize now the reason why he said that is he was so convinced he was going to lose her probably in surgery that it was almost like not worth doing. The only thing I knew how to do at the moment was to pray. Don't take her. Take my strength, okay? You take it with you and you fight really hard because I'm going to be out here fighting with you, okay? I love you, sweetheart. And they told me she was in a really deep coma, but as soon as I told her I loved her, her arm flinched. Now, they tell me that was probably not voluntary, but I don't believe it. When the doctor came in after the surgery, he, he, he just looked different. He said, well, we've 
we got in there and I, I found the bleeder right away and was able to get it under control and her pupils started to dilate and it was like <sighs> he also told me that the paramedic that made the decision to intubate her bought her the time she needed Your mom and dad are here every day she would do something that would make us have more hope we'd say wiggle your toes and she'll wiggle her toes or squeeze my hand and she would this one's from your principal at school your vice principal there was a, an immense feeling of goodwill, I felt, coming from other people. Come on, honey. Right about the 12th day, when she started to come to, okay. the timing was perfect. Her grandma and grandpa were there. Some of her aunts were there. We were all there. Hi, Heather. I love your baby. <laughs> and I love you, too. Oh, God. The best gift you can get in the whole world is to see her open her eyes and look right at you and, and you know she's there. They gave her a wheelchair to get around and she refused it. And the next day she was pushing it. I was so proud of her. It was like watching her for the first time walking and watching her for the first time spelling her name. She had to relearn everything. Oh, orange. Perfect, right. She Orange. had um, a problem with word retrieval. Mm -hmm. But she has a real good ability when she when notices she's, she's not doing something right to Fast. sit back and kind of laugh at herself. When, when would you have a glass of milk? Um, when you're eating cookies. She's not all the way there yet, but she's going to be. It's, I know Heather. She's got that drive. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> It's been four months since the accident that changed Heather's life. I just want to be the same how I used to be. <laughs> Amber, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm doing really good in school, except for home economics. I wanted to be a marine biologist, but I want to be a nurse now. <laughs> She's been very good-natured about the whole thing. I like that about Heather that she can make other people feel comfortable, make them feel happy. That's special. I thank God all the time. But I have my daughter. The paramedic that um, insisted on innovating her, he saved her. I call them the unsung heroes because how many of them get thanked? I mean, how many of them do you ever see again? Knowing that you made a difference in that girl's life is, is a special feeling. She's going back to school. She's going to be able to go to her senior prom, be able to drive a car. I'm ecstatic that it worked out the way it did. There's an incredible amount of guilt, and I deal with that every day. I deal with that when she struggles for her words. I deal with that when I see her finally back at drill team and, and trying to catch up with the other girls. My responsibility was to make sure that she was safe at all costs, and I didn't do that. Sometimes I sit back and I look at her and I just start laughing because she'll be doing things that I don't expect her to do, which is silly because with Heather, I should expect the unexpected. I tell her all the time, Heather, you're amazing. You can do whatever you want.